Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We've got a lot to get to tonight because we had a lot of sports going on over the weekend. We've had March Madness and everything that goes into that. The Final Four is finally set, so we know who is going to be playing to get to the national championship. Not quite f- for the national championship yet, but a lot of excitement in, in college basketball, men's and women's, really, uh, overall, when you when you look at everything that's been going on. And, and I think the scheduling purposes really help. Uh, and then we're also going to touch on MLB because it was opening weekend for the MLB. A lot of fun stuff going on there. Exciting time uh, for baseball fans all over. And we're also going to touch on the UFL, the new spring league. It's it's new but old yet new. And so we're going to talk about it. But before we get into it, first, I want to bring up our sponsors and one of my favorite sponsors, just because we've had them as a sponsor for so long now, but it's also a sponsor that I use so often, and that is SeatGeek, because whether you're a fan of uh, live events being sports or um, music or comedy or theater, whatever the case may be, you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price. That's where SeatGeek comes into play because with a seamless mobile experience, SeatGeek makes it extremely easy to buy and sell tickets in just a couple of taps. It uh, doesn't get any simpler than the way that SeatGeek does it. It gets even better because SeatGeek also grades every ticket from red to green based on value to help you find the best deal on tickets and to find the best seats that will fit your budget. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop securely knowing uh, knowing that your uh, your information is safe, that your ticket is actually going to be a real ticket and you're going to be able to scan it in at the door. I actually had a coworker. Uh, he, he was asking, you know, like he, he, about... Uh, t- and buying tickets and everything. He's not really much of a, a, a sports event goer. So he was asking, hey, what's the best place to get it? I told him, go to SeatGeek. He was looking around. He said, man, I can see exactly where I'm sitting. I can see like these green dots, yellow dots, red dots to tell me what's a good deal. This thing's awesome. And now he loves SeatGeek too. Um, we love SeatGeek so much that we've teamed up with them to make sure to get you an amazing offer. You can use our code R2TO at checkout and boom, you'll get $20 off your next ticket purchase. That's right. Just download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Pick out the perfect tickets for you. Find the ones that fit your budget, the where you want to sit, whatever event is coming near you. Uh, I just bought uh, some Luke Combs tickets to go watch Luke Combs slash racing weekend. Uh, So I'm pretty excited about that coming up this summer. Uh, And I used SeatGeek, an amazing deal. And I got $20 off by downloading the app and using that code R2TO over there with SeatGeek. Check it out. Life's an event, and SeatGeek has your tickets. Let me go ahead and bring in my two co-hosts for this fine evening. I guess morning, whenever this is released, it's always weird, kind of in that in-between stage for us. But first off, Jeremy, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, had a long weekend. There was just so much to <clears throat> excuse me. There's just so much to try to encounter just for MLB opening day. It's it's always good to see MLB back in full swing again, pun intended. But I mean. If it's anything, if you're a Twins fan, we already know I am one. I'm sorry. This is how it's going to be. Um, it was definitely disappointing to see them go uh, a big goose egg on the board against the Royals the other night. But outside of that, I know we got a lot to talk about, Josh. So I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get going with it. Yeah, MLB was fine, and it was it was a lot of fun too. What and just watching all the teams kind of get back in it, and nobody knows <laughs> the love of baseball more on this panel than. Our man, Blake Lane. How you doing, Blake? What's up, fellas? I'm hanging in there. Uh, how about them New York Yankees, huh? Here we go. Going, going down to Houston and putting on a show, uh, just a completely different team from last year, the last couple years, actually. Uh, getting to see Juan Soto in the in the pinstripes and in that Yankees uniform, that was fun to see. And just without Garrett Cole, him being out for a month or two and you just uh, battling back and finding a way to win baseball games. This team's different. I, I truly feel that uh, this team could uh, could be something. And it feels good to see other guys step up besides Aaron Judge. It doesn't always have to be Judge now. Uh, there's multiple guys that are stepping up. Uh, you saw Alex Verdugo make that slide and catch out in left field the other day to, to end the ball game. And so – uh, that's always fun to see when you're watching the Yankees, and and we're just not asking for two guys to step up anymore, like Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge. So I was extremely pleased to see that from my Yanks. 
Yeah, yeah, I was excited watching your Yankees and, and how much better they look right now. I mean, it's yeah. it's definitely going to be fun over there in that division. I know my Red Sox only went 2-2 two and two in that series with the Mariners. Uh, so I was able to tune in for uh, – actually, it was the two games that they won <laughs> that I was that I tuned go. into. So maybe, maybe I just need to keep on watching uh, yeah. you know, and stop – I need to stop not watching uh, and make sure I tune into every game. Then maybe that will help them win. But no, I mean, it's it, baseball is a lot of fun. Um, we're going to start off by talking about basketball, though, because it is the okay. peak moment of basketball right now when you're talking to college mm-hmm. basketball. And then even even on top of that, it kind of leads into the NBA finals, because here towards the end of the, the tournament, then you get the NBA finals starting. Uh, and so, you know, this this is the peak moment for basketball. A lot of fun. First wanted to start off. I know I didn't have this in the show notes, but did you guys see in the women's game? It was. Who was it? It was Texas versus NC State. Um, I, I think that's the two teams that it was. But they went out there. Both coaches from both both teams walked out there and had to walk off the court uh, to the three point line to find out that both sides, both three point lines, were at a different measurement. And they I saw saw that playing through the game. What? Would you would you guys play through the game if you found that out? Well, you each get a half on uh, on each end of the court. Well, so I, for I women's, guess that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, women's it's swapping. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, they do the two. quarter now. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess I guess you get two quarters a piece. So yeah, but do you want to be on the wrong side of it in the fourth quarter in a tight game? That's yeah, what I'm I mean thinking. that'd be tough. Like that's I, wild. I don't know because apparently this had happened for several games prior too before they caught it. And it was this game, that Texas game. Uh, I might be wrong, but I feel like it was Texas and NC State. I know it was Texas. um, But, yeah, I mean, that was just crazy to me. Um, Yeah, I think that's insane. They went against. How does that happen? I I don't know. know. Like with this magnitude of a tournament, how do do you let that happen? Yeah, yeah, like that's that's all you have to do is go out there and get the court ready. And somehow, like I don't don't understand either because like how – I guess I've never seen them put the court together. How does how does a three point line not match up right? That's what I'm saying. Someone uh, had some really hot toddies and they yeah. kind of messed up. Yeah, NC State Texas. I had to look it up to make sure that I had the right the right game. But yeah, I mean, I'll I'll send this this picture to the group chat real quick, and then maybe I'll maybe I'll try to edit this in too to show you guys because this this is crazy. You can see you can see the difference when you're when you're looking at from a bird's eye view. Like if you look at the top of the key. I just sent that if you guys want to look at it. That's that's insane to me. Portland can't do anything. Oh, wow. Right. Portland can't oh, get their wow. crime, their homelessness under control. Now they can't even paint a basketball line. Wow. Like what 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 does what did they do right out in uh, Portland? <laughs> I've been there. It's not uh it's it's not a great place. So Man, th- that just that was mind-boggling to me that that well, how many times has this happened in the past and we never knew it? Yeah, that's insane, no, man. That's that not, can't happen in, in, in this magnitude of a tournament. Can't happen. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and I, I want to go back. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see if I can find some time to go back and see who started on which side of the court. I don't know if I'll be able to yeah. find that out. But I, I want to find out who started on which side of the court and if the team on the right side of the court, uh, with the closer in three point line, if they did better. I wanna I wanna look at those stats. But yeah, I mean, that was insane. just absolutely that's mind-boggling nice. to me, and you can see it, uh, and so yeah. that's, that's just crazy to me. It's blunt. But uh, let's yeah. go ahead and get into March Madness. <clears throat> I, I don't have a whole lot. the The Iowa LSU uh, game is going on for women's, so I, I don't really want to dive into women's. Maybe we'll we'll touch mm-hmm. on that on our Wednesday episode, uh, or I guess we record on Wednesday, and maybe we'll re- release that one on Thursday to talk about the the women's tournament. Um, but right now the elite eight still going on. We still, we don't have the final four. So let's dive into the men's because the men's weekend was pretty insane. Uh, each of us, we, we all filled out our sweet 16 bracket. Jeremy and I talked about it. I called the Bama upset. I just felt I, well, and, and I'm, that's not to take pride in pride in it because I called the Bama upset. You guys went with UConn, which was the smart move. I, I, I also said, I really should take NC State and bring them all the way to the Final Four because they're just hot and I shouldn't bet against them. But I didn't think they were going to beat Duke. Uh, and so, you know, I, I I didn't have NC State coming through. But we'll start off with Bama. So each of us, after making a bracket with just the Sweet 16, 
we each have one team left in the final four. You guys have oh, well. uh, UConn UCLA. winning the national championship in your in your brackets. Uh, I had Bama in the final four, but I don't have them winning the national championship. Uh, I had Houston, so that one's out. Oh. But just you know, just craziness happening uh, when you look at what's going on in March Madness Madness this year. Purdue going as far as they have. We'll talk about them, but let's start off with Bama and kind of their their. Uh, journey here so jeremy jeremy and i even made a joke about clemson nobody's picking clemson nobody thought clemson no. would make it to the sweet 16 so i'm not even no. going to put them in this they end up upsetting arizona so now bama has to go against clemson and that game uh, and then bama also upsetting north carolina four seed bama uh, beating uh, number one seed north carolina this is the first time in school history bama has made it to the final four so, I mean, just a, a really crazy turn of events when you think of just a couple of years ago, Nate Oates was a high school coach, and now he's leading Bama to their first ever Final Four. I mean, that, that program has made a huge turnaround, um, but they, they upset North Carolina. Uh, Clemson upsets Arizona. I think they were a six seed, uh, upsetting two seed Arizona. Uh, and so, the, again, Clemson just not picked by anyone. And now uh, Bama ends up beating them and just – a really crazy fashion too, because this Bama team, we know that they're going to score a lot. Pretty much all of the SEC teams were known for scoring a lot of points. You're going to score 80 plus points every game. And that's been happening. Um, so you, you see this, this Bama team come in here and it started off kind of ugly when you talk about overall field goal percentage. But if you guys caught the end of that game, that's where it got insane because it just felt like both teams could not miss a three pointer. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and it was it was a lot of fun going to the, down to the wire. A little part of me was like, you know what, my bracket's already ruined. Let's go, Clemson. Let, <laughs> let's go. Let's 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 win the national championship because I said that would probably be the funniest <laughs> national champion because nobody saw that one coming. Uh, nope. And so yeah, watching watching Clemson get that far and put that big of a fight against a Bama team who is just on fire. A lot of fun. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll start off just talking about Bama. Blake, I know that's your team, man. You're a Bama boy, so. You're, you're cheering for them roll tide, right? No, absolutely not. <laughs> um, but I will give them credit where credit's due. And, uh, and you know, one thing I'll say is Mark Sears is an absolute leader, and he's a dog. And yeah. uh, I'm not huge on six-foot point guards. Uh, but when you can shoot it from the parking lot like he can, uh, he, 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 makes, he makes life a whole lot easier. And – um, I'll tell you what, this Bama team, they weren't a hundred percent. They were missing right. So, uh, one of their big time scores, uh, he, he got the concussion, uh, in what was that? That was the, he was out for the UNC game. So it was in the round of yeah, 32 game even, against, uh, mm -hmm. against Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. That's what I thought yeah. was crazy is that you go against arguably the best team in the tournament. And I don't even think there's really much of an argument for that, but you know, you, you can debate it. The best team in the tournament, um, you you go against them, or sorry, I'm I'm thinking of of UConn. Whenever I'm thinking of, I should be thinking of North Carolina. But you're you're going against North Carolina, one of the best teams in the tournament for sure. They're, yeah. they're a one seed, a very good team. They're they're historically good, and you're not even at full strength. Nobody's picking you, and yeah. they, they played the underdog role extremely well. Came out there and just really shocked a lot of people. I'll tell you the biggest thing for Alabama, in my opinion, has been Nick Pringle and his ability to step up not only in the paint, uh, but his ability to step up at the free throw line. I've been very impressed. And if you look at this Alabama team, they've played much better, much better defense in the That's tournament cool. than in the regular season. Um, and I, I, I truly believe if you want to win the NCAA, in the NCAA tournament, you have to have somebody – on your team step up each night. It's got to be a different guy, all right? And they've had that. Stevenson stepped up the other night. He missed – I think he missed his first two shots. He kept shooting. He stepped up, knocked down some big-time shots. Um, we know Mark Sears is that guy. But Pringle on the inside the other night, it was um, it was Grant Nelson. Grant Nelson's been under a lot of criticism all year about we expected him <laughs> to do this, we expected him to do that. And now all of a sudden he's playing like the Grant Nelson that we thought Alabama was getting. 
Uh, he's being physical in the paint, his offensive game. I, I think one big thing with Grant is he stopped relying on the three-point shot so much. He started getting the getting the ball to the uh, to the rim and uh, and drawing contact and things like that because he's money from the free throw line. And I'm just really impressed with Nate Oates. And like I said, I I don't want them to win the national championship. I hope they get beat by 30 by UConn. Uh, but. Uh, look, it's just the rivalry in me, fellas. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, like I said, I'll give them props when it when it's you know the time comes. And <coughs> but uh, the Auburn in me, I hope they get beat by thirty, and uh, I will be a UConn Husky Saturday. And uh, you know, congrats to them; they finally made their first Final Four. That's awesome. I think it's big for the state of Alabama when it comes to basketball because Alabama's kind of always been known as a, a football state and then baseball, and now basketball is finally starting to trend upwards. Uh, so I, I do think it's big for the state. I am happy that uh, basketball is growing in the state of Alabama. Uh, but, yeah, I, I can't say enough about this team. It's somebody every single night that's yeah. stepping up. And uh, even even uh, Estrada, I got to give him, he had his night against UNC. He's been under a lot of criticism from, from Alabama fans, people saying that he hasn't brought it here and there. Uh, and he stepped up against uh, UNC and hit big-time shots. So it just seems like, like I said, every night there's somebody new. And that's what it takes to win March Madness. Yeah, and, and for our Thursday episode, when we record on Wednesday, release on Thursday, uh, that's when I want to do the, the head-to-head matchups, um, you know, so that way we can kind of give it a little bit of time because they don't play until Saturday, right? Am I, am I mm-hmm. thinking, thinking wrong? Um, yeah, they so, play Saturday. Yeah, play Saturday. yeah so, so I, I want to wait for, for Thursday. So you guys can make sure to tune in for that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk these matchups. But jumping ahead of myself, the matchup is going to be insane between Alabama and UConn. You talk about a very defensive team and and UConn, very offensive team in Alabama. It, it's going to be interesting. I'm I'm really excited for that matchup. Um, but I mean, Jeremy, uh, we we sat here talked about the Sweet 16, and I picked Bama to upset North Carolina. And you know, I I think a lot of people would have thought I was crazy for picking it. It's just one of those things that. Bama was one of those hot teams I was rolling with. And I said, you know, they're just, they're hot in a weird way. And like you said, Blake, man, they've just got somebody that steps up in a key yep. moment that you didn't mm-hmm. expect to. It's, it's, they remind me a lot of Golden State, you know, the way that uh, back in Golden State's kind of heyday, because Golden State was known for scoring a lot of points and you can't keep up with them. And, they have somebody pop up on, on the court. You go on back whenever you, they had KD. You go out and guard KD. Okay, now you're leaving Steph open. You guard Steph. Now you're leaving Clay open. You know, and then you're you're guarding Clay. And you know, even backing up before then, all of a sudden Iggy comes on and wins you the, mm-hmm. the championship. It, it's just crazy things. That, that's the team. Not a complete comparison, but that's the team that kind of reminds me of just a little bit with that sense. But Jeremy, I mean, Bama's hot right now and getting their, themselves to their first Final Four appearance. It's really cool to see somebody that hasn't been in the Final Four make it to the Final Four, that's for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, <clears throat> like <clears throat> excuse me, like Blake said the best, it's just not one in particular player that's putting up points for the entire roster. It's it's an all-around team effort. Everybody's getting the ball. Then they're all putting buckets in. Like, another name that I may or may not have heard Blake say, but I can remember, even like Ryland Griffin, he's even putting up good numbers even too. I mean, it – it really is a big thing for Mark Sears and just the entire Alabama team and just what they're able to bring. I mean, if you look at Clemson for what they were able to do, I mean, it was just mainly on Joseph Gar the third or even on, um, um, Shefflin for Clemson as well. They were the two main people that were putting out the points for Clemson. That, to me, Blake said the best. It just can't be an individual battle. It's gotta be a whole team effort. And, Obviously, as you guys can see, the overall outcome, the the team that played the hardest and played the best came out on the right path. And my yeah, hats off to Alabama. Feels, it feels like they're very consistent in the way they're playing. Yeah, that's too. The it's, thing. it's not. It's not kind of this. We're gonna wait until the last minute to come back, kind of ball. It's just it's, mm-hmm. we're we're here. You see yeah, what, what we're giving you, and we're off. gonna keep on running it at you, doing do what we do best, rather mm-hmm. than try to find a way and find a way to break down your weakness. We're just gonna do what we do best, and that's score points. And, and that's 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 incredible to be able to do. If Clemson hits their free throws, let's be honest, they win that basketball yeah. game. Oh, oh yeah, for yeah, sure. for sure. 
Well, and there's there's something weird too because I feel like was it North Carolina or was it the game before that where who Bama was going against was missing free throws and kind of helped Grand out. Canyon. They it couldn't make Canyon. a free throw. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it's it, it, that's a couple of times where they kind of get saved by it, but again, you just do what you can do to win the game. Don't focus on what mm-hmm. they can or can't do. Just focus right. on what you do best. I mean, that, that's what they're doing really well. And I guess, Blake, Blake, you and I are kind of in a similar boat. You know, Texas got to make it to the the top four, you know, make it to the four-team playoff, and they were all proud of themselves for doing that. <laughs> Oklahoma's kind of looking over at them like, good job, little bro. <laughs> you, you, get the same. To you get to do that's the same here in basketball. Like, hey, good job. That's you finally made it there. But, you know, what's what's crazy, too, is that Bama fans – are just so used to their football team being in the situation where they are the Yukon of this tournament, you know, mm-hmm. but now they're having to come from the Cincinnati of the tournament. Like, Hey, we're the new guys in town. We're the underdogs, uh, whether they're going to play like that or not. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very crazy to think about their basketball team is now put in the uh, complete opposite situation of what their football team and you know what they live on uh and mm-hmm. what they breathe what they're they're used to but <clears throat> let's let's go ahead and jump over uh to yukon real quick just talk about them um just because that's that's who bam is going to have to go against here in this next round it's going to be a phenomenal game i'm really excited for that tournament but yukon coming out of the, the big east uh and, and winning that one i i want to back up to that game because it start starts there winning that final in the big east tournament they win against marquette 73 to 57 big differential then first round they go against stetson 91 to 52 this is the beginning of the 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 national championship tournament and you win 91 to 52 going on to northwestern northwestern has been making a stink for a lot of teams but you know and and really making a fuss for for just about everyone they've faced especially in that big 10 tournament making it making it through and kind of Given a little bit of a glimpse, maybe maybe Northwestern can surprise us. They beat Northwestern seventy-five to fifty-eight. Then they go on to San Diego State. San Diego State, who, correct me if I'm wrong, last year made the Final Four. A, a no, they played team. in the Natty. They, they, they played. Yeah, they played, they played in the, in the Natty. national championship. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I guess yeah, I forgot about that storyline. Uh, and so going against them, you know, very tough team. San Diego State's been looking hot in this tournament too. Beat them eighty-two to fifty-two, thirty points <laughs> to go on to wow. the you know to the elite eight. Then you get to the elite eight, and you're you're fighting in a tough battle against Illinois, and then go on a thirty to zero run to end up winning seventy-seven to fifty-two. I mean, guys, they're winning by more than twenty points in every single one of these matchups. They are covering the spread and then some, and just putting disrespect to any of their opponents. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't pick UConn to make it this far because I just felt like they're so hot. There's no way they stay on on fire. They're they're gonna they're gonna they're so hot. They're gonna burn the kindling, and it's gonna mm-hmm. be whittled down to nothing. That's not the case. And and I I totally disrespect a UConn, so I put my apologies for that. <laughs> UConn UConn is on fire. <laughs> this is unreal, man. Um... I, I I just like. The thir- thirty to zero run that was like wait a second I need to flip back over to this game and rewind against wait, the what's top going 10, on against the top ten team in the country too that wasn't and no and, uh, and no an slouch. Illinois team yeah. who was like one of the top scoring offenses in the nation too yeah. yeah it's it's not just an Illinois team that struggles to they they play defensive ball no this is a high scoring Illinois team and yeah. you just shut them down to zero points while you hung thirty on them that's that's it's, insane man. So I got asked if UConn repeats, is this the greatest, are they the greatest college basketball team of all time? And I think that's a good question, but I think you have to say yes. I think if they win in this fashion against Bama and then whoever it is in the national championship, whether it be NC State or uh, Purdue. Or Purdue, yeah. if, If they win in this fashion where they cover that spread and then some, when they're winning by twenty plus points, no doubt. I, I, there's never been domination like this. Because no. they won last year's tournament by every game. They won every game in last year's tournament by fifteen plus points. Yeah. yeah. So and, that and would be twelve games in a thing. row. That would be twelve yeah. games in a row in the NCAA tournament that you win by fifteen plus points, bro. It's insane. 
it's unheard it's, of. Yeah, I mean, they they were. I don't know. I just I I, I didn't. I didn't imagine them going on this. I, I guess it's just like the the hangover that you get from winning the national championship. I just I, I assumed eventually that's going to set in. Eventually that's going to set in with these guys because you think too. Uh, they lost to Seton Hall and Creighton uh, throughout the season over there in the Big East. I mean, those are th- th- in those two games. It was like, yeah, this is this is kind of what you see whenever whenever they're put up a- a- against a you know the test. And that's just what I, uh, for some stupid reason, my brain was telling me that's going to happen here in the tournament. And it's March Madness. You can't you can't be a one seed making it all the way into the national championship. That's not how this works. <laughs> It, it does for UConn. It does for <laughs> UConn, yeah. So one thing I'll say about UConn is, first off, Klingon's a problem. The kid down low, yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven-footer, he's an issue. Uh, I don't know if anybody can actually stop him. Uh, the other thing I'll say is I think the only way you can beat UConn is you have to be like a Creighton. You have to be able to knock down outside jumpers. All right, you have to shoot the three ball at a high percentage. Who can do that? Alabama can. Okay. Yeah. But they're so good on defense, man. They're so good in making you play their game. They're so good in half court offense. They're good at everything. They're great at everything. So <laughs> for me to sit here and say that, you know, there's a team out there that can beat them. I don't I just don't know that any of these other three teams can get it done because if you're Alabama just remember against Clemson they had that little scoring drought and they were down like 13 or 14 points if you get down by 14 to UConn it's it's over coming back because they're going to bury you and so that's my biggest thing in this game I think Alabama has to uh they got to keep the 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 foot down on the pedal, and they got to keep the gas. Just crank it up, baby, and you got to get it going early. You can't fall behind because when UConn gets you down, uh, they don't let up, and they're going to shoot it. They're going to shoot it at a high percentage. They have great guard play. Um, they're fun to watch, man. They are fun to watch. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's safe to say they are definitely the favorite at this point. I mean, yeah. If if they weren't before, they have to be now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they're they're just they're absolutely insane. But let's jump over to Purdue. Um, Jeremy, I know you had Purdue. I think in your bracket going pretty far. Uh, they're 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 again one of those teams where I, you just can't trust them in the tournament. I didn't think they were gonna lose first first round like they did last year and lose to a 16 <laughs> seed. Didn't think that was gonna happen again. But you know, going forward, I think in the second or third round, I had them losing to my uh, my original bracket. Uh, and then, you know, like when you talk about having to go through teams like Tennessee and, and, and seeing who they had on their road, I don't know. I just feel like Purdue is going to find a way to lose. But then again, what we talked about is if, if Purdue ends up going against, you know, they, they go against Gonzaga and they go against Tennessee, another mm-hmm. couple of teams that you just can't trust in the tournament. <laughs> it's like it's those were that was the perfect matchup for them to go against Gonzaga. Can't trust them. Tennessee mm-hmm. can't trust them they're going to squeeze their way past. And so that now they come against a, a very hot NC state and we're going to talk about them, but uh, Jeremy Purdue, they're locking themselves in to the final four uh, with a pretty solid win over Rocky top. I, I know. Like I, I think the reason why they lost like Tennessee lost because they probably listened to me sing, but um, <laughs> I mean, for Purdue, they just, they just been so grimy and they don't let up. They're just a team that, has been also putting up unbelievable numbers. Nothing like UConn, but I mean, they're they're somewhat comparable scores, but nothing like for what they can transform like out of UConn. And obviously, I know we were talking a little bit before the show. Obviously, you look at the roster and they got so much people, and they have a really really big height advantage. Obviously, to their roster, there's one guy under six foot. And that's the part that completely mind boggles me. Otherwise, you look at these guys, they're 6'6", 6'7", 6'8", obviously. Uh, Ber- Will Berg is 7'2". If you get – if you try and so much as block against that guy, you might as well just – you might as well just go ahead and sit down because good luck trying to block him. I mean, 
Purdue. Well, and and just... when, when you watch Purdue, uh, I know we were talking about this uh, before recording too. When you watch Purdue, obviously Zach Eady is their guy. And, oh, and for sure. the criticism that he's getting is, you know, it, it, it's, it's fair criticism to throw out there uh, that you see, you see very similar defense being played by him mm-hmm. as you see whenever he's on offense. And, and if you so much as breathe on him, it's a there's going to be a whistle. Um, whereas on the other side, you don't see that going against him. I think there was something like nine minutes left in the game before he finally picked up a foul. That's, for a foul. Yep. That, that's, that's, that's crazy to me. And not only that, I just feel like he's, he's not Favorite. that exciting. He's not exciting yeah. to watch at all. I think he's boring. But about the criticism, I don't think it's fair to criticize him for that. It's it's not his fault. The referees, on the other hand, I think the the guys in the the stripes. Mm-hmm. I, the, here's here's my my complaint, and it's it's the same thing with you know we've got this hip drop tackle that's going to be you know I don't know how well it's going to be enforced in the NFL this year, uh, and then you back it up to something like targeting or roughing the passer in football, uh, and and. Roughing the passer in the NFL is even worse. But, you know, if you take that, for example, what's frustrating about these penalties isn't the fact that they're a penalty. It's how they're called, how consistently they're called. You'll call it on one team for doing something, but then something more egregious on the other side you don't call. That's the same thing in basketball, and there's so much of this. I feel like this has been all tournament long. I know Jeremy and I talked about this uh, last time when we we were talking about the Sweet 16 just like how terrible this the, the officiating has been in it's this tournament horrible. overall. It just feels mm-hmm. so lopsided in every single game on one side or the mm-hmm. other, and uh, that, that's just, that's one thing. But I don't I don't think it's Zach Eady's fault, uh, so I don't like the criticism being shown towards him. He is a good basketball player, uh, and I also think that the other the other thing about him is that oh he's just a tall guy. I think he's a good basketball player because of his height. You know, he's I think only seven things, four. The two things go together. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's a, a really boring player to watch. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't, I don't like watching Purdue. I didn't like watching them throughout the season. They lost some games that they shouldn't have. Uh, and now getting into the tournament, they're winning games that maybe they shouldn't have. But uh, overall, I mean, they're, they're on fire. They made it all the way to the Final Four. I've seen some people say that he's the greatest college basketball player of all time. And I'm, I'm sorry, man. Did you tell him to wash your mouth out with soap? In my opinion, the disrespect to people like Kimba Walker and and yeah, like come on, bro, like what? I, I, I just mean, Kyrie I or know. going back going back to I mean honestly anybody from Duke uh, in the past or uh, I mean you know you, you think you can you think of like what Anthony Edwards was doing back at Georgia or what Anthony Davis at Kentucky or Zion you, Williamson. Bro. You know, like yes. there's way too many, way too many great players that brought excitement to the game and mm-hmm. put up the numbers. I, I don't, I don't need to see you put up the numbers. I need to see how you're doing it. Mm-hmm. So like everybody was like, "Oh, he had forty. He had forty. Like he shot twenty-two free throws. What do you expect? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. You know, I just, I don't. Just because you're taller than everybody doesn't mean that you're better than everybody. Uh, just because you're seven four and you don't get fouls called on you, and all of that stuff, man, it, I just it's really hard watching Purdue play. Um, it, and I just have trouble watching Edie play because I feel like they want Purdue to be 2019 Virginia so bad. They lost to the 16 seed last year, and they want them to make that magical run to win the national championship. And I saw John Fanta say that. He's the one that said that Edie was the best player in college basketball history, and I just can't rock with that, bro. I, I'm I'm so far going off of that that it is blasphemy that somebody would even. I even quote tweeted and did the little Jonah Hill thing. I was like, nah, you know. I just <laughs> so it's crazy to me. So his his free throw percentage is sitting around uh, like sixty some percent, sixty four percent. Yeah. If you round it up, sixty-three yeah. percent. If you don't want to do the rounding, that that's that's a great basketball player. I don't know. I, I feel like free throws are the the ones you should always be making. That should be easy money. But let's move on from Purdue. We got NC State, the Cinderella story. Like I said, Jeremy, I, I, we talked about we talked about North Carolina State, 
and they're one of those teams. I was like, man, I should just put put all my money on them because I feel like they've been so hot and surprising everybody up to this point. Who's to say they won't keep on going? I'm cheering for them to win the whole thing right now because of how hot they've been. I'm definitely cheering against Purdue. I'm, I'm cheering for for NC State against Purdue, but I mean, going against UConn, that's going to be the test. They, they're just a team. NC State's one of those teams too that. I don't really know outside of D- DJ Burns. I don't really know what to put my finger on, on why they're this good. Um, because like th- this team has just gotten hot out of nowhere and it's, it's not a bad thing to be good and nobody understands why. Um, but this NC state team, they're on fire. Uh, and I-, I also wanted to ask you guys, do you think DJ Burns could make it in the NFL? No. Without a have, doubt. You, have you, have you, have you, have you heard about no. that? He's, he's like, there's, been rumors about uh, NFL scouts wanting him. <laughs> so I, I mean, saw the, that. The dude. I saw that. The dude is the dude is so much different than than anyone I've ever seen because he's mm-hmm. ginormous. I, yeah. And I'm not just talking height. I mean, he's thick, and he's got such a soft touch. I, I was listening to uh, the the, the Crane and Company boys on my way over to the hotel today after work, and uh, kind of listening to their episode this morning and and. Uh, Blaine said that dude goes and plays plays basketball and then goes home and plays the harp because <laughs> he's just got such a soft touch. I mean, it's no it's doubt. true, man. Like this this guy is is unlike anything I've ever seen. But I I love watching NC State and and I would absolutely love to see them win the whole thing just because of how they've done it. If you're not cheering for UConn, you have to be cheering for NC State. Yeah, I mean. You look like you mentioned, Josh. DJ Burns, he's not um he's not the lightest feather out of the bunch. This dude is 6'9", 275. I don't and, think I would uh, describe him as a feather at all. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. But like the smallest guy, like for poundage wise, is 180 pounds. That's Alex Nunnally. And I mean I think he's got he, an NIL deal with McDonald's or Wendy's or something. What? <laughs> is, I mean that that's the that's the only thing that explains how he's staying so big. Hey, he's still them, running around the court. I mean he's he's fast. He he's he's big. He's got like I said, he's got soft touch, able to drop it in from anywhere on the court. I, I love watching this dude play. And I what's funny is I never watched him throughout the season. Like I, I don't know how. I mean he he never caught my eye at least. Uh, and so that's that's kind of shocking to me. And I feel like he's now becoming kind of similar to like the the Clay, Caitlin Clark figure over on the men's side just because like everyone's fallen in love with him like oh my gosh I'd love watching this dude play mm-hmm. uh, and and he's just he's he's st- standing out not only that but the NC State uh coach I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on his name right now uh, I should have wrote that down but he he was he was fixing to get fired before the tournament I mean he he was fixing to get fired he's on the hot seat and now He's made Not it this anymore. far. There's there's no way you fire the guy now. No. If no. you fire your head coach after this whole ordeal, you're an idiot. Making like, it to the final four. <clears throat> first time since like the 90, 80s. 80, 88 maybe? 89? Yeah, Jim Valvano had that crazy run. It was 1983 that, you know, for Valvano. Yeah. Okay. He, he had that crazy run, and they ended up winning it at the buzzer. Would that be Houston in that game? I think I it was. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So – that's wild, man. NC yeah, State. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're cooking. Is. They're cooking, bro. Like the Horn kid. I think it's Horn, the guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah the guard. Yeah. I mean, he's he's kind of a little dude too. I, I, he looks little. Maybe it's just because he's next to DJ Burns. But, <laughs> yeah, but he's getting buckets. He's getting buckets. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love I love this team, man. Like everything about them, and and it just seems like they can throw the the entire bench in the game, and they're still out there on fire, and and they're one of those teams too that they, it's like. It doesn't ever feel like they've got control of the game, but then you look at the scoreboard. All of a sudden, it's like, oh damn, they just won! Like they they they, they won this game. Like it it didn't feel that way at all, and they do it. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like I just can't put it put my finger on it because like the whole game, it feels like it's a really tight match, and then they end up winning. Uh, you know, it's like going against going against Duke too. I mean, they're just just that, that's a tough matchup, uh, and then they did it. They pulled it off. They they looked great. Uh, and so NC State, that's that's my favorite. That's who I'm. I'm going to put money on them for the Final Four. I can't mm. put money on them for. Maybe I'll put money on them to cover the spread in the national championship game against UConn. 
there but you go. outside of that, I don't know what we'll, we'll, we'll get to our predictions or anything, but, uh, March madness has been absolutely mad to say the least Thanks. insane, just been a lot of fun, but let's jump over to the MLB. We'll quickly touch on the MLB because it was opening weekend and we've got to talk about them. You know, we kind of brought up the Yankees a little bit seeing, I mean, let's, let's start there because new faces in the MLB and, and new places, uh, you know, seeing Juan Soto over there, uh, back on the East coast, uh, chilling out. What's, what's your feelings on it, Blake? Uh, is he a true Yankee? Yeah, he can be for the rest of his career if he wants. <laughs> I, it looks like he loves it to me. Yeah, he's yeah. always looking hyped up so far, four games in the year. I'm about to watch them here in about an hour and 20 minutes. They play the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. So, I mean, he looks he looks refreshed. I mean, he, he got away from the state of California and went to the Bronx, and he looks like he's loving it, man. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, I think he uh, – I think he's going to do strange, weird things in that short porch uh, in Yankee Stadium. And uh, and it also just allows you to, like, John Carlo uh, shedding that weight, being able to DH, stay healthy, not play as much right field or left field or whatever. Uh, you bring over, uh, bring over Verdugo from the Red Sox. Um, you get John Birdie in a last-second trade right before opening day coming from the Marlins. He makes a play yesterday uh, to actually save the game. Um, so, you know, you got Volpe, he had a stomach bug. You were able to slide Cabrera over from third to short. You got pieces, man. You got depth this year. You just, you got to hope and pray that Carlos Radon has a much better year, which he did. He looked good in his first start. He looked great. That is what we need. That's what we're all praying for. But you got to hope Garrett Cole is okay because if Garrett Cole's not okay, it's going to be tough. Your, yeah, your chances are drastically, drastically way down. Now, if Garrett Cole ends up being okay, it could be number 28. It could be number 28. It could be. All right? That's all I'm saying. It could be. So, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. And and I feel good for Aaron Boone, man, because I've always been a big Boone guy. I, I just – I feel like he gets a lot of heat sometimes, and I don't feel like – the organization uh, helps him out too much. And and yeah. what I mean by that is I, w- I was always a big George Steinbrenner guy, and the Yankees haven't been the same since George passed away. And uh, they haven't had that cutthroat mentality to go win a championship. And so hopefully they're getting back to that. Uh, uh, adding Juan Soto uh, <laughs> made me feel really good about uh, what they're doing in the front office, and now you just got to lock him up long term. And I would like to see one more piece added to that pitching staff, uh, so they can actually make a legitimate run. Yeah, that that was the one thing that I felt like was really lacking last year for the Yankees was getting getting the depth in there uh, for the pitching staff. I just mm-hmm. it, it didn't it didn't feel like they had enough. I mean, m- maybe they need to go get the uh, the pitching coach from Oklahoma because she seems to have that that pitching uh, that hold the, that that uh what's that called now i'm, I'm drawing a blank what is it now not, not not the dugout uh the the bullpen drawing a blank yeah the bullpen man i don't yeah. know i was i was drawing, drawing a blank on the bullpen but she's got that bullpen stacked with like six six pitchers so maybe you need to go get her and bring her over to the yankees to help you guys out but <laughs> another name though to, to add on to the the list of new new faces new places shohei otani over making his debut with the dodgers looking looking all right uh he's He's not pitching for a while this year. I don't know how long it is that he's got to be out, um, mm-hmm. but he's not going to be pitching, but he's still at bat uh, and still doing pretty Watch good at bat. Uh, yeah, and, and so he's he's still doing all right. Got him, got himself a couple of RBIs this opening weekend. Uh, got himself a couple of homers here and there, um, scoring some runs. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's still looking pretty good, you know, up at bat. Although I must say the Dodgers – are looking like the 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 Mookie Betts, uh, you know Mookie Betts team right now because I mean he's when, when I watch the Dodgers he shines he shines all over the place uh, so I I really like watching Mookie play right now so uh, but anyways Juan Soto going over there kind of a trying to trying to create themselves a little bit of a, a Josh, uh, don't superstar forget Freddie team. Freeman too yeah Freddie Freeman yeah another another big one out there can I say something can I say something about Mookie Betts real quick yeah what up? shoot 
I know I know my buddy is a natural infielder and everything, and he went to the Red Sox and played outfield and then went to the Dodgers. Bro, bro was winning MVPs in the outfield, all right? Yeah. And now just went to short and was like, hey, it's just another day, dog. Yeah. It's just yeah. another day. Like, like gloving it. I mean, he – well, I think he's got to be I, up I there as like one of the, the the best athletes in the in in baseball right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, because you're more of a baseball guy. Shortstop has to be the the toughest position, right? I mean, outside of pitcher, I guess. I, don't know, uh, I, don't know I feel like shortstop has to be the toughest to me. I mean, you got to have the most range. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean. Maybe not the toughest. Yeah, because I feel like third, in my opinion, oh, third. Yeah. What third is tough? It's oh hot. Word. It's it's the hot corner. I uh, absolute the pressure. Absolute piss rods hit down there. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. I which guess, which, I mean, I guess when you get a lot of righties, the shortstop, the short short is like the leader of the infield. And yeah, I guess you take on that role of being the most difficult. You gotta you gotta make the the long throws and everything, and you gotta go get the ball up the middle and turn the double plays and all that stuff. When I when I think of like the the most athletic and the craziest plays, or even players, I think of shortstop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like, absolutely. I'll, I'll even back up just because you know I watch I watch more uh, Oklahoma softball than I do baseball. Um, Grace Lyons, she was phenomenal at shortstop. Like mm-hmm. that, if if you hit it anywhere between. You know, like between like the midpoint of first and second, all the way over to third base, she's covering it, uh, yeah. and she knows she she finds a way to get up and, and toss it. Uh, I mean, there's there's a ton of short stops that I I think of that's the most athletic and the the mm-hmm. most like kind of highlight plays. You know, double plays come from the short stop, uh, so yeah. that's, that's why I, I think of the short stop. So I mean, the fact that Mookie's filling in that position to me. I feel like that's got to be the hardest, hardest one to play because you got to be fast, you got to be on your game, you got to be ready for mm-hmm. just about everything. Uh, you also got to know the batters because you got to know where to cover, where where to be placing yourself to make sure that you can cover the right spots. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, when I, when I watched the Dodgers the other night, I was thinking, damn, like I, I like watching Mookie Betts right now. I, I like watching him. He's yeah, he's he's fun. Dull. He's a lot of fun to play or to to watch play. Um, let's see who's another. New name, I guess. Uh, Corbin Burns going out there to the Orioles. That was another mm-hmm. new, new face in a new place. I liked seeing that. Uh, and there's, there's quite a bit of more. Uh, is, is there more? He left Milwaukee, and Milwaukee swept the Mets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? How about that? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's he funny. he left Milwaukee, and they got into it. Did y'all see the slide by Reese Hoskins? Yes. And Jeff McNeil yes. got in. Yeah. I, I thought yeah, that was, was kind of cowardly more. how Reese waited till he got back to the dugout to talk, yeah. but. That was pity, in my opinion. Yeah. So, was, so here's here's one thing. Uh, here's here's one one uh, stat that I I was able to pull up. So the Astros held the record for the longest opening day win streak in MLB history, having around ten straight games between 10, 2013 and twenty three. <clears throat> and your Yankees put an end to it. I forgot I forgot I had that written down uh, whenever <clears throat> we were talking about your Yankees. So they they ended the longest opening day streak in the history Four of the games MLB. in a row. Four games yeah. in a row. That's, Feels that's good. crazy, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Against a very good Astros team. And they yeah. have – they've Houston. crushed our hearts. They've crushed yeah, our hearts. Like right, in so. Houston, too. Like we're, yeah. we're talking like the city of stealing signs, Houston. <laughs> that's... The trash cans. The fighting <laughs> trash cans. Oh, man, I love it. Uh, so another thing that, that I thought was crazy. So I don't know. I, I didn't look it up to see if it still stands true today. But as of yesterday, every team in the MLB had hit, hit a uh, had had scored a run, at least a run, except for the White Sox, who didn't make it past first base. <laughs> didn't make it past first base. So if you feel like, man, my team sucks, if you're the Rockies sitting there getting clomped again, just like we saw, what was that last year, like twenty six to four or something like that, that they got killed. It was uh, bad. Then, then they then they just they just opened up this weekend with one like nineteen to one or something like that. Uh, if you're the, the Rockies or who, whoever whoever your team is, and you're thinking, man, we suck. You don't suck as bad <laughs> as the White Sox suck right now. No, the Oakland John. A's are better than the White Sox right now. Yeah, they're they, terrible. Thing is, they can't even get fans in the stands. Yeah, mm. they boycotted it and only showed up like thirteen. Fourteen thousand showed up, and there was like yeah. twenty like. 
some sometime in twenty I can't remember exactly the day. They had forty four thousand for an opening day and now they're down to thirteen barely fourteen thousand. That's horrible, dude. Sad. So the there was thirteen games going on on Thursday for opening day. That's I mean that's that's baseball. Full swing. <coughs> Full swing. I love it. Uh any other teams you guys wanted to shout out for opening day? Uh I mean obviously the Braves are gonna keep killing it, man. Yeah. They're, yeah. Their style. I'd rather so. I'd rather not talk about the Braves right now because I know we're gonna have to talk about them postseason. <laughs> yeah, Congrats yeah to the absolutely. <laughs> Congrats to the Diamondbacks putting up fourteen in the third inning. Mm. Yeah, can can, yeah. The, can the Di- can the Diamondbacks can they, they can they do it again this year? They, they can make a run. They, they they're can make young. A run. They're young. Yeah, they're good. I, I like they're good. Yeah, I like I like mm-hmm. that team. I, I was a little underwhelmed by my Red Sox for sure. I mean, just not a bad opening weekend. Just two and two, and I just kind of feels iffy but that's the thing though is like it's it's hard for that this is the hardest thing for me watching uh hockey basketball or baseball especially baseball is the fact that you've got so many games when when do i start to feel good or bad about it you know and it's it's hard to find that i'm feeling great yeah yeah i mean you are don't don't get just just don't get too far ahead of yourself just don't get too far ahead of yourself but uh Let's go ahead and move on. Did you guys catch any of the UFL this past weekend? I watched uh, about a half of the Renegades and the Stallions. Um, and I saw which, which half? Uh, the first half. I saw Matt Corral okay. throw the bomb uh, yeah, so right at both, half. Both quarterbacks. So I, I feel like Adrian Martinez came in there, and I was really hopeful for him. Uh, you know, he's mm-hmm. a Nebraska boy, so I was rooting for him for my my dad and my my brother uh so you know i'll, I'll root for for uh he, they, they called him 2 a.m at at uh at nebraska it seems like he he must be waking up a little later now because now he's 9 a.m he's not number two anymore but uh yeah so in that that renegades game i, I guess one thing that was, that was a lot of fun right at the end uh what was it the renegades no it wasn't the renegades now i'm now i'm uh forgetting which one it was the st louis uh, battle Hawks against the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Panthers ended up beating the Battle Hawks with a game-winning field goal, a 64-yard field goal from oh, Jake so Bates. The boat. It was his first ever field goal no in pressure. an actual game since high school. No pressure. And he didn't just hit it once; he hit it twice Dang. because they tried to they they tried to ice him as they snapped it. He kicked it. It looked beautiful. And he he looked over at the sideline like all pumped up. I yeah, this. I did that. I did that. He walked out there, <clears> boom, <throat> right down the middle with plenty of distance to go. Sixty four yards. He opened up the 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 first, I guess, the second game of the of this league with a record that is going to be very tough to to beat. Uh, so right. that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then at least he didn't pull uh, Tyler Bass and miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and then uh, I, I saw what's the dude's name. His last name is Blewett. Kyle blew it or something. Kyle like that. blew it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw saw him out there in the in the UFL. That was fun to see as a kicker. It's a perfect name for a kicker too. Um, yeah. And then uh, an- another big one too. Did you guys see the fake the fake punt to the center? Pass it down to yeah, the center. The, big boy uh-uh. gets score big touchdown. Boy score. It was the Brahmas. Uh, so the uh, they they faked the punt and the Brahmas, uh, San Antonio Brahmas. Uh, he ends up getting it down there to him, and, and the, the center comes big across man, in motion. Moses. It was obvious that he wasn't supposed to get the ball. He's supposed to draw no. the defense away. He didn't. He didn't draw the defense away. They they ended up going over there to the receiver. Punter launches it down to him. He had just catches the ball, it just makes goes, the touchdown. Uh, it just God. beautiful play. I, I think it was like running. a what was it like a forty some yard like a forty for, forty eight yards or something forty nine yard punt. Yeah, I mean it was it was a big yeah. big big play, man. It was it was fun. So I mean. I wanted to start off by talking some of the big plays of the weekend just because I was excited because last year I was I was probably more excited because okay, the rock takes over the XFL. I want to see this do something. And it was super underwhelming. Uh I do think that, you know, I was cheering for the Renegades last year. I'm gonna root for my guy, Bob Stoops. And uh so I was I was cheering for them last year. They end up winning it all. That was fun to be able to see them do that, but there just wasn't a lot of excitement in the gameplay. I will say XFL, I hate you guys because you instilled this idea of the kickoff 
and gave it to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And then you went to go doing the more fun kickoff. That, yeah. what, you can't you can't do that. You can't create this new kickoff system that everyone hates and then you yeah. you abandon it. Uh that that was that well, was shady. That was shady. Well, and I think they even backed it up to like the twenty five <clears> yard line. So it gives the the returners plenty of room. Like, no, you're not you're not calling a fair catch. You're running the ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I loved the kickoffs. That they were a lot of fun. The Renegades had a few really big ones. The first one of the game was huge, uh, and so there was a lot of fun. I just I wanted to kind of get your guys' thoughts on pros and cons for the UFL, though, um, because I think with them merging, uh, first off, the there's there's only eight teams right now. Uh, so there was four teams from the XFL and then four teams from the UFL or the USFL mm-hmm. merging together to create this UFL spring football. Um, that I think was a good, good move for them. Merge, merge the two leagues together. Don't sit here and basically compete against each other and get half the viewership merging together. I think that was a good, good spot. Um, they have eight teams. I think it was a plan to move for next season up to 12 teams. And then the 26 season move to 16 teams is kind of their gradual success. Like, let's see how we do this year. Hopefully we can add up to 12 next year and then add on top of that the year after. Mm. I think that's a really good model. Um, so, I mean, I, I see some good things coming, and I think this opening weekend was a good weekend for them. I think yeah. there was a lot of a lot of excitement. I think enough people <clears throat> tuned in to see it and be like, hey, there's football on TV. Uh, and so I, I, and I think there c- can be good that comes from it, having football on the TV um, and, and kind of getting this. But I, I kind of want to get your guys' thoughts on some pros and cons of it. Uh, what do you think they need to do to, to make it make it better or – is it just never, never going to stick around? Um, good. That's 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 a good one right there because my feeling of it is is it's kind of like it's it's like minor league baseball. All right, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to a couple games and, uh, but I'm never gonna be like fully invested. You know, like I, I might go drink a couple brewskis and and. Uh, and chill with the boys if I don't have anything to do on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, and they're playing. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as like making changes to the league and all that, like it's just gonna be minor. It's gonna be like minor league baseball, man. Where it's just kind of like, you know, who really cares? I'm not really invested unless you know they were to get like a retired. Just say Tom Brady was to trot out there for you know the the renegades or whatever for a season, then I think people would be like, Oh, you know, you know, but as far as, uh, it ever being like, you know, 50,000 people in the seats or 70,000 people in the seats never happened. Uh, so maybe 20,000 people, 30,000 people in the seats, but they can probably still pull more than the Oakland A's did on opening weekend. Wow, man. Yeah. Uh, trash organization and they yeah I mean trash but I that place is gonna pop I look I get the Oakland A's hate and I get they've always been the Oakland A's but I think it was a brilliant move to move to Las Vegas I think it's just gonna oh, yeah, bring sure. so much more life like that stadium in Oakland is a dump did, uh, did you who, see the stadium who wants to go to the Oakland Vegas stadium yes it's Oof, bad it looks looks weird. yes I want to go I want to go trash. like Yes, like like oh no, who wants to go to Oakland? Like the stadium is trash. Would you rather go to Oakland or, or Vegas? Like it's not that hard to me. Vegas, uh, and and that stadium in in Vegas is going to be super nice. And I I get it one hundred percent. But as far as like the the um, UFL or whatever they call it now, they've had thirty different names. Uh, I just think it's always going to just be like, oh, look, you know, spring football is on. Like, oh, yeah, so, it's the so minor one, leagues. One reason why I'm, I'm such a, a, a an advocate for the league is that I love I love the initiative. I love the the like what what they're trying to do, given guys yeah. that you're a great you're a great college player, but you didn't ever get your break to make it in the NFL. Like think of guys like Will Compton. Uh, Will Compton was a monster at Nebraska. Yeah. He was really good for a couple of seasons in the, in the NFL with with his his time in the NFL, but you know whether it be injuries or just not getting placed into the right system at the right time, uh, whatever the case may be, a guy like him doesn't get to get doesn't get to play because of that. Um, or you know you think of maybe like a guy like Dylan Gabriel. I don't think Dylan's going to make it 
as an NFL QB. I don't. Mm-hmm. But he's but he's got talent, and and so f- to give him that opportunity to go and play, maybe he shows somebody that hey, this guy can play in the NFL. Let's let's bring him up. And so I, I like that opportunity for the guys. I think that's the big reason why I want it to succeed. Uh, they haven't done good in the past. I think them merging the two together and not dispersing the talent to two different leagues. I think that was a big move for him. And I think yeah. it was it was way it was it was ten times more exciting to watch the football being played uh this past weekend on Saturday and Sunday than it was last year. Last year was yeah. not exciting. Definitely. There wasn't talent. I, I saw talent on the field this weekend. And so that was one thing that I'm I'm pretty excited about. But Jeremy, how do you how do you feel about the UFL and its future? I mean looking at it future wise I'd like to see it stay, but it's unpredictable as of right now. I mean, to me, I like a pro thing. I see it as like with the Super Bowl after that. It's another thing that we can obviously watch on TV. And like, it's like, I know a lot of people like some, I can't name maybe off the top of my head, but like they live off of just one particular sport. Like they live, eat, sleep, breathe in football. Like, whether it be from the NFL or college or now the UFL or whatever. Like it's definitely one thing to where you can just stick to watching football. What feels like all year round, but obviously it's not, but I mean, there's, like I said, there's people that that deprive off of just watching football and nothing else, Mm -hmm. but like for a negative thing in order to, in order to watch it, if you can't go to, you got to find a, find a program that's actually going to stream it. Like you look at a lot well, like, see, that's, that's one thing that I think they did right this year too. They didn't just, true. so now they're, they're going to be streaming on Fox, you know, whether it be true. FS1 or Fox true. or even ESPN. Not only did they do that, but they actually got good commentators this year because I'm trying to think it was Joel Klatt and I can't remember who it was with him. Um, uh, they had he had his his partner that was a good one. But then the Panthers, I don't I don't remember who it was that was commentating for the Panthers uh, against the Battle Hawks, mm-hmm. but they they did a phenomenal job with with the commentating. And so I think that them streaming on a better platform, like you said, because um, they're they're not like on ESPN Plus and stuff like that. They're on national television right yeah. there in front of you, uh, and then getting better commentating. That yeah. was a huge part to it. That was that was the boring part last year. Uh, I don't know how I feel about them saying their plays right there on See, air while, they, while they're like. saying it. I just I I like it from the fan aspect of I get to hear your thought and making a play call, and then I also know what's going to be played and like how how you're you're designing plays. That's cool. I just don't like that you're saying it right there in front of in front of everybody on TV. Like, how yeah, is this not going to get leaked and somebody like? be able to like steal signals and stuff like that. I, I don't I'd know love to see like a 10 year old go, mommy, what's trips X double edge, right? <laughs> what the heck <laughs> yeah. are you even saying, dude? Like, I, I do. I do like it, but I also hate it at the same time. It's like, yeah. that's cool. But <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like you telling me what you're about to play, man. Like, yeah, it's just, it's weird. I want um, to be but, a surprise, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. Uh, and I'm also hopeful that, that Iowa hangs on to this 13 point lead right now. I just saw angel. Reese Polinka. She threw a brick, uh, sixty-five to fifty-two. Ooh. So uh, it's it's looking looking good for the Hawkeyes right now, but there's there's a lot more. Like I said, we're gonna get into the the women's basketball tournament on Wednesday to release on Thursday. So make sure to tune in on Thursday uh, for that. We want to talk about that and also get into uh, the final four matchups and dive into that. And I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about. So make sure to stay tuned and. Uh, Tune in whenever we we get to discussing more. We thank you guys all so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button uh, and hit that like button as well and comment down below. Let us know what you think. And uh, you can follow us on social media. We're on the X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. So you can check us out on there and show us some love. Um, And then always, as always, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, You can give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us over on those platforms. Share us with your friends. We do have some big news that I'm trying to figure out how and when to drop it to you guys. So make sure to stay tuned for that too. Um, But we thank you all so much for for all of your support. Uh, It's been been tremendous, all the growth that we've seen so far. So we thank you all so much. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.